All right, so in a previous video, we talked about functions and I introduced the term functions and how we can use them. If you missed that video, you can go up here. There's going to be a card up there and you can click on it. All right, so you know what are functions now. Um, now, what's up with this void thing? I said that I'm going to explain it and yeah, we need to know about it because it's just there and doesn't know, we don't know anything about it. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> What's up with it? Well, this is what is called the return type of the function. Okay, so the return type of the function is the type for what the function returns. What does that mean? Well, remember what I said about step by step, right? It gets to FIBO of 6 and then it enters this piece of code and then after this line it just jumps back to here well when it does that jump back that function can actually return something can actually jump back with a value right that's the return value and that return value has a type that you really write on here okay so you go what's the type of the value that you jump back in the main function what what's that type well let's say we want to return this number that we print okay we want to return this n2 okay so what's n2 well n2 is of type int so let's return an int okay since we've modified this from void to int we're now forced to actually type in a return statement. A return statement basically says, okay, well, jump back, jump back to main and return what I'm gonna tell you to return. Okay, so return what? So return, well, we want N2. So return N2 and that's it. So that just says jump back with the value N2 inside the main function and how can we get this value? Well, we can actually assign it to the call to that function by saying int, let's say r from return equals FIBO of 6. Okay, and let's say like print f, we just got percent d inside the main function. And I'll say r in here. If I try to run this, you will notice that we just got 5 inside the main function, which is amazing. This means that what we did here is basically communicate, I want the sixth number inside the Fibonacci series, and this guy actually returned it to me back inside the main function. And I can do whatever I want with it after that, right? This is really cool. This means that I got, I both specified an input, this 6 in here, and I also got an output out of it, this return n2, which I assigned in here, okay? So that's how you can actually get back a value, jump back with a value from um, a function. Now, the cool thing with this is just that you can, instead of returning in here, you can also return it anywhere you want. You can return it here if you feel like it. You just need to make sure that uh, the function always ends with a return statement. So if I do something like, uh, I don't know, if one equals zero and say return that, then the function doesn't return uh, anything, right? Because one is not zero, so it's not going to execute this line and it's going to go past this and never return anything. So you still have to specify a return statement. But just keep in mind, you can return whenever you want which means you can actually finish the execution of the function whenever you want with whatever value you want at that uh, point in time, which is kind of cool, right? So, well, let's say, let's say K is, well, K might be some other number, right? So if K is less than two in here, then we have a problem because we're not going to get into the for loop and we're just going to print one. But if k is like zero, or no, if k is one, 
we would kind of like to print out 0, not 1, not m2. So if k, uh, let me actually exemplify this. So if I say FIBO of 1, I want really the first number in the Fibonacci series, which is, well, 0. If I try to run this, we're going to get the, the first number is 1, which is not true, actually. So I want it to have a special case for k. If k is 1, then what I want is, well, you can still print this out. I don't have a problem with it, just n1 here. But I want to return n1 instead. And if this is true, we're going to execute this line of code and then execute the return. And what the return does, it says, oh, go back to main function and basically finish execution of the function. The function never gets like it doesn't go past this if if, if it uh, goes inside this if. All right. So it just kind of jumps back with this n1 now. So I also changed the output of that function and we can actually uh, check that it was correct. So I'm going to say R2 equals that and I'm going to just print F this R2. And we did in fact get the first, well, not really correct, but the first number is zero. And we just got zero inside the main function, which is absolutely amazing. We can now actually link up multiple functions, multiple pieces of code <laughs> that can be templatable. Uh, for whatever input and whatever output you want. And one more cool feature um, for the functions is that you can have multiple parameters. You can say here int j, for example. Okay. And then when you call the function, you can say, well, here's k, the first one, and the j is one. Okay. So just separate them with uh, a comma and you're done. And you just have to change every single call to that function, right? So say two and three, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it's there and you can actually use it. So you can have as many input parameters to that function, but just one uh, return type. Okay. <clears throat> so just one return time. Don't forget that uh, you're actually limited to just one. In a later video, we're going to see how we can actually have multiple return types. But that's a little bit more advanced and it's a little bit tricky to do. So that's all for this video. I hope you understood what's happening here. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have questions. Do subscribe if you want to know the answer of, uh, if you want to know how to return multiple uh, parameters. And well, thanks for watching.